Hello and welcome. This is a smarthelping.com financial model. This is the biggest model I've done uh, this year. It's a short-term rental investment analysis slash, slash simulation financial model, uh, short for STRs. And so the purpose of this is to show um, investments in properties that you rent out over time uh, for at least terms of less than 12 months. And we've got a lot of scaling logic here to show the financial results. Uh, this is just a summary here at the front, but we'll get right into the meat of it here on the acquisition schedule. So this is really where it differentiates in being perfect logic for a short-term rental uh, business endeavor. So let's just start left to right, and I've got the sections labeled here so you know what's going on. The first section is renovation or acquisition and renovation. You can uh, label each property, the date of purchase, and the uh, unit count. Now, you can aggregate these. So these could be 20 separate properties, or they could be tranches of like, you know, one property or, or uh, you know, five properties. And then you just put in the average um, average price, you know, purchase price per unit, average cost per unit, and all, et cetera, all the assumptions that are based on that, say, per unit on them, you would just... Um, put that and then the unit count would be the multiplier to get the totals so you can use this for potentially thousands you know a giant operation or it could be a smaller operation and each of these could just be a single property or it could be a property with multiple units and you want to just define the inputs by uh, the total units so here's a simple case just to show you how it works um, we've got 20 slots I'm just saying they're all purchased in January 2022 uh, I just simply named them ID 1 through 20 one unit count, purchase price $100,000 per unit. Total purchase is just 100,000 for each one because it's just one unit. Uh, you could do renovation costs here and then that will also multiply by the amount of units. And then the length of the renovation will define the live date. And the live date is when variable expenses and rent revenue start. So however long this is, is gonna delay your income from the purchase month to uh, based on how long this renovation is. Also, the renovation cost will be evenly spread over the re renovation period. This model will go out to up to 15 years, and we've got monthly and annual summaries, and it does have options for joint venture if you're raising funds through you know, an LP, GP structure, or if it's just you doing it, um, you could zero out um, on the monthly waterfall. You would just put uh, you know 0% for the LP, and 0% for all the cash, so it just goes, everything goes to just the operator. So very flexible in the funding sources and funding or, or uh, structure of the whole entire endeavor. Next up, so each individual, and this is something I've done that's, I've never done it for a model where I've did a bunch of slots for real estate investments, where now you can define the if there's financing or not individually. So each of these could be separate. You know, you might finance one, not finance the other, et cetera, all the way down and this is all dynamic. You've also got the percentage financed of the purchase cost. This will tell you the amount financed. And then you define the uh, amortization, which is the term of the loan. You know, I was just testing numbers here. These are all arbitrary right now. Let's just say these are 30 year loans with some uh, annual percentage interest rate. Payments per year must be 12. And then we can also determine, do you want to do refis with these structures? If yes, you select yes, select the months until refi, which is going to delay, you know, it'll do the refi based on this number of months past the purchase month. Um, now, if you hit no for debt here, then all this will zero out and there will be, uh, you know, no debt, no debt service or no refis. But if you do want to do that, you can select individually to do that or not for each one. Uh, the refi rate just put 5% in here, and also the amortization on the refinance loans. Payments per year is automatic, and then you've got loan to value. And so this is how, how do you determine how much you're going to get on the refi? Well, you can define a cap rate to get the valuation on the refi month. The, the amount the bank is willing to lend you on that value is here. And then um, that will determine what the loan's going to be. You'll use that amount will pay back the initial loan, plus give you some money back to distribute uh, to investors or, or what have you. And then um, you'll have a higher debt service, most likely at that point. And 
Um, there is debt service coverage ratio in here to measure, you know, net operating income against the debt to make sure uh, that's always above one, um, or else you're not covering the debt service. And then you can define exit cap and exit month individually. So you don't have to exit all these at the same time. You can pick individually when you exit the properties and at what cap rate, which is going to apply to the trailing 12 month net operating income against whatever cap rate you put in here. Uh, now let's get into the fun part, pricing. So you can figure out how much you're going to charge in rent per day, the annual growth in rent. And then here's where it gets really cool. This logic took me a long time to get right. So we've got utilization or seasonality. So this de defines for each month of the year, month one through 12, this would be January, February, etc. You can define of the total days in each month, what percent are you having utilization? In other words, are you know, you're, you're charging rent, people are occupying your property. And you could change this. I just put 80% for everything, but you can change this by property and per seasonality or per month. So it should never be above 100%, but maybe it could be as low as 50% if you're slower in the summer months and busier in these um, winter months or vice versa. So that will drive uh, rental revenues against a uh, starting rent and growth of that rent and then utilization. And then we also have price variance from base. So this lets you, if you just put 100% here, it's just going to charge the base rent um, based on the days utilized per month. But you can raise or lower this. So you can say, well, in the slower months, uh, maybe you'll charge less. In the uh, busier months, maybe you're going to charge your your base, your rent's going to be a little bit higher than the base. So above the base would be anything above 100% and below would be less than 100%. So if you wanted to charge you know, double, you could put 200%. If you want to charge half, you put 50% for a given month and for the, each of the properties. Again, this is all dynamic. The next part is, well, if you're going to run a property, uh, you've got expenses, so property taxes, insurance, permits, management fee, other administration, um, other payroll, and then some extra fields here. These are operating expenses that will uh, be fixed per month per unit. So however many units you have here, we'll multiply by this to get this cost per month. And this will increase based on the annual expense growth rate you put in here. And then again, that's dynamic for each of the property IDs as well as each of the different expenses. And you could change the name of these if you want. Then we have variable expenses, which is some more new logic I've never done. So this variable expense in this context means essentially the busier months you can charge relatively, you might have not charge, you relatively might have more expenses or higher expenses in slow months you might have lower. So whatever expenses fit that um, dynamic, you can put in here. And the way it works is it will look at the utilization to get the baseline. So here, if it's just 80%, then it's just the expenses are gonna be what they are. But if you have some that are 80%, some that are 50%, the months that are 50% utilized, the expenses that you put in that base, base uh, cost here, they will only be a proportion, the same proportion as your 50% relative to whatever the max utilization is. So essentially you're putting in your maximum monthly cost for these expenses in any given month per max utilization. And then it just does a proportion. If there's lower utilized months, it'll, it'll lower the expense by the same amount. So this is just a, um, a way to get you the nice seasonality cash flow, which is really important for the first, you know, 12 to 24, even 36 months of operations of a, you know, STR business, because you're going to need to know when, what the cash is looking like and when. Um, then finally, selling fees. This is just going to be a fee on the exit. If every time you um, exit a property, you sell it, there's going to be some, you know, brokerage fees and all that. So you can put that number in here and it'll come out of cash flow. Uh, so that's all the meat and potatoes of how you drive this whole model. It's all right here. And the rest of this is just going to be automatically populated monthly and annual pro formas based on that. We've got pro formas for each ID, monthly and annual, as well as consolidated monthly and annual and monthly and annual cash flow waterfalls with the joint venture, you know, with IRR hurdles. Uh, and so over here, if you keep going, this is just a summary of the total NOI of the lifetime for each uh, property ID, 
total purchase cost, renovations, debt funding, debt service, debt repayment, refi, refi debt service, refi repayment, and net exit value. And then you sum up all of these, and that gives you the total cash flow of the whole project start to finish for each ID here. And then this is a check, and this should always be zero. And then we also have some more checks down here. These should always, always be 0.00. .00. And this is just checking the individual. So it's looking at the consolidated monthly and uh, monthly um, totals and then measuring that against here. And then here is summing up um, aggregate totals down here on each tab, which I'll go through each of these tabs in a second. So it's checking and then the monthly consolidated will be summing up each individual um, subtotal. And these are also summing up uh, totals so those should always match and if not there's an error in the logic or you possibly broke something so you always want to see zeros here um then we've got annual irr for each property as well for, uh, start to finish and that will be dynamic uh, and there's advanced internal rate of return calcs that are on a monthly basis that's what we use here um, this irr is based on monthly cash flows which is more accurate than doing annual uh, okay, so once you, you drive all the assumptions here, you can go and you can see detail. If you see tab one, it's showing you um, just some seasonality assumptions based on those inputs we just talked about. The rental income of this property, the fixed expenses, the variable expenses, net operating income, and then all the debt, acquisition, debt, exit assumptions. So here you've got purchase costs, renovations. Um, the first loan debt funding, and here's all the assumptions for that, which are pulling from the assumptions tab. Then you've got refi, if that's happening, and all the, the refi proceeds, debt, refi debt service, refi repayment. Um, when that happens, you can see if you scroll over here, there's the refi event, and then here's the exit event. And this is all dynamic. Again, it could change based on you changing any months or timing on the assumptions. Uh, then finally, we've got exit value, net exit value, and then finally cash flow and debt service coverage of the entire property for the whole life of the, the 15 years that it can run. And again, you could run it for any amount of time. It could be five years, 10 years, whatever the case may be. So this is this, the format, and then you've got an annual tab uh, for each property that does the same thing, but just on an annual basis. And then I've done annual uh, charts for each of these annual tabs as well. So cash flow debt service versus net operating income, and cash flow, all items that affect cash flow over time. And then you've got a summary here showing the total of all the main line items and grand total and variance check on here as well. So lots of sanity checks because there's a lot going on. You want to make sure you're always matched up. Um, so there you have it. Um, each tab is unique. And or I mean dynamic based on that, and, but the tabs are all the same logic and on the same timeline. Now that all, the, the monthly consolidated here, you can see this is really cool if we put a one here, we can see here's the consolidated rental revenue of all properties, all expenses, net operating income, debt service, debt um, funding, repayment, purchase, renovations, and exit. You can see all of this on a monthly basis. Total cash flow per month, that service coverage, cumulative cash flow. So that's a really cool. This all properties consolidated. You could hide unhide that to see each item and just check it for different things if you want to drive down. Also, you've got the same deal on a consolidated level. Here's all the properties, but um, over 15 years annually. You can see this quick snapshot of the whole entire business case. Um, we've also got charts on this. You've got annual cash flow. Let me unhide these. And then there's annual cash flow by ID. So this is showing you um, on all the properties, what's the cash flow look like for each one in each year, as well as the annual, and then annual cash flow for the whole project. Um, so that is that. Then we got monthly waterfalls. So this is a joint venture structure. It's just a simple three-tiered IRR hurdle um, structure. So the first hurdle says until the LP gets 10% internal rate of return, split the cash 85-15, GP-15, LP-85. Uh, you can define the contribution requirements here based on how much you want the LP to 
contribute to any negative cash flow months versus the GP. Um, and so then up to 10% IR, the LP gets this split of cash, up to 15, this split, up to 20, this split, and after 20, this split. And you can see that all happening um, on a total level here. And if you scroll over, you can see how we go down. There we've met a couple hurdles on the refi and then on the exit. And we're already at 50-50 at that point. And you can adjust these internal rate of returns to whatever fits your deal, as well as the cash flow splits and uh, contribution requirements. Like I said, if it's just a GP, you could just zero this out or put 100% or 0% for LP on this, and then it all just flows to the GP. Uh, annual waterfall just shows you the annual 15 years and how the LP versus GP gets the cash. There are equity multiples, the IRR of each, and then the cash flow of each right here. Uh, and some sanity checks, lots of sanity checks in this model to make sure uh, everything is flowing correctly. And that's the whole thing. That's everything. So lots of value here. This is one of the best real estate models I've ever done. It's going to be a one-time fee of $75 to purchase it. And I will include it in the real estate template bundle that I do have, uh, which has um, mobile home park model, uh, self-storage, mixed use, multifamily, and now it'll have uh, short-term rental. So I'm really excited to get that in there. Um, lots of value here. I tried some new formatting. I The, the assumption layout is really, um, I'm really happy with how this is flowing as well. Uh, so I believe this will be a great template for um, a lot of people to use in the future if they're doing short-term rentals and want to do investment planning. Alrighty, I'm SmartHelpy.com and take it easy.